Nature is a prominent aspect in just about every game you've played. The feeling of the wild and open environment brings a bright, refreshing, and colorful aesthetic to any game you find yourself playing. But there's just one game that shows the true nature of nature, one game that embraces the darkest side of the wild, and one game that lets you experience the true meaning of survival of the fittest. Last Nintendo Direct, I let you guys suggest a video for me to make through a form, and there was one submission that stuck out for me. It was by a fellow creator named Saint Fuki. They suggested that I play Rain World. I didn't know about the game at the time, I looked into it, and it looked really fun, so I bought it, I started playing it, and what it had to offer blew me away. Rain World is a survival platforming game, taking you into the adventure of our pal Slugcat, who got separated from his other Slugcat pals and takes to the venture of making it back home. Unfortunately, this Rain World is a cruel one. It's infested by tons of wicked, bloodthirsty creatures, deadly leaps and climbs, and most of all, food is scarce. At the end of every day, rain pours down at ferocious, lethal speeds, so you must seek shelter by the end of the day with enough food in your stomach to survive through the night. The game is difficult. Your moveset is awfully limited. You'll usually find yourself squirming around the ground just trying to make a jump, similar to the antics of Octodad. And with this crazy moveset, you're still appointed with the task of hunting and scavenging for food and finding your shelter before the rain comes down. You can always choose to play with an easier mode that lets you hibernate with less food, but the same theme is still nonetheless played very strongly that this game is not an easy one. And a big reason why the game isn't easy is because it's so realistic. You are prey. You fight and flee for your life, barely scraping by from the ones higher on the food chain. There are tons of different species in this game that all interact with each other, which is something that you never really see in any other games. But this game will take it a step further, including the food chain as an entire gameplay aspect, hunting for creatures lower than you on the food chain while fleeing from animals higher than you. Or better yet, letting creatures even higher than those animals feast on them to give you your chance to escape. It all adds a unique charm to the game that hasn't been seen anywhere else, and what makes it so special is that it fits hand to hand with the aspect of the food chain in the real world. There are plenty of other parts that also line up with the real world. The visuals give us a look at the sparse setting of Rain World. There's so many different and interesting places to see on your journey, each giving you a taste of how our actual world looks from the eyes of a tiny slug. The journey will also have you taking many paths, keeping track of where you've gone and figuring out where to go, similar to how your average Metroidvania is played. This particular sense of exploration is the same to the drive of adventure the wild offers for us in nature. And with this link between the game of Rain World and our only sometimes Rain World, the representation of a small creature fighting for their lives is why the game drives so desperately to give you a challenge. But is this challenge too much? Why not just have us play as a big, higher on the food chain monster? Well, when I think about it, the game wouldn't be that special game I felt it was if the game were easier. The vigorous challenge is actually one of the more fun aspects to the experience. When I'm notoriously getting food, jumping over enemies, climbing poles, then dying just to be sent to my last save room a mile away, I still feel motivated to pick myself up and try again, since when I do, there's always something different I could have tried, a different path I could have taken, or a different strategy I could have used. And when I feel down after being halted at the same room over and over, the game throws in a little bit of art your way, giving you a little insight into the protagonist you're freeing. It's letting you know that the game is aware how hard you're struggling, it knows how hard the journey is. This is a concept that I love in games. We can see these aspects played very well in games like Dendera, Hades, and especially Celeste. And seeing this excruciatingly challenging game throw this special bone your way is one of the many reasons this game hits so close to home. Sometimes when I'm playing Rain World and I finished a hard working day and I'm here at the hibernation screen, I just let it sit there. I don't press continue and listen to the calm rain sounds that can be heard outside the shelter. I love how well nature is presented in this game. 
Who would have known that such an interesting and unique aspect to a game would be brought out by an indie game? It's not like we've seen that a thousand times. So cheers to Rain World being another inspiring indie to add to the collection. And to everyone watching, thank you for listening.